I knew that was going to happen. Power 96 sports microphone. Tomorrow night we'll be on Power 96 with the Falcons. St. Olaf football coming back on Saturday on KDHL radio. They'll be at home, their home opener. We'll have that on KDHL. The Carlton Knights are off this weekend. They get a bye week the first week. Next weekend, they'll be at home against Pomona Pitzer. I'll have that here on Power 96 next Saturday while the Oles are on the road on KDHL. Good evening, football fans, and welcome to legendary Bruce Smith Field for tonight's football game between the visitors, the Nona Carter Ramblers, and your Fellow Academy Cardinals. We'll have the national anthem in a moment, but first, please stand. You can hear there's a bit of wind out here tonight. Prayer found in your new program. Loving God, God, bless the, the participants who will be involved in this event. We ask for their safe participation and willingness to learn from, from this experience. Bless all who have traveled, traveled to this place. May we all return safely to our homes. Keep, keep us mindful of our behavior and, and let us be supportive of all people here. We, we thank you for this opportunity to gather and, and praise your name forever. Now, for the playing of the National Anthem. Under the direction of the director, Brad Morris. band I did have a chance to visit with the Cardinal head coach Jim Beckman here are his thoughts
senior left guard, number 66, Harrison Gill. Left tackle, sophomore, number 70, Brecken Catterlin. Senior, number 78, Matt Friesen. Right guard, senior, number 59, Joseph Kunzi. Right tackle, senior number 65, Michael Crone. Tight end, number 17, senior, Willie Potter. Receiver, number three, senior, Hudson Dillon. Our running back, senior number two, Derek Sando. Junior, number 33, Barack Barner. And that quarterback, senior number six, Elliot Leland. <laughs> Ramblers are coached by Mike Schmidt, assisted by Derek Freeland, Braxton Lindau, Brian Kriesel, Tim Post, and Jared Rowan. Cardinals are coached by Jim Beckman, assisted by Jimmy Kotek, Ross Carlson, Ty McAvoy, Chicken and Rubin, and Steven Huff Officials for tonight, line judge, Barry Gerke, umpire, Scott Ruby, Tom Schultz, back judge, Kyle Double, and your referee, Brian Kelly. That was perfect timing because the Winona Cotta Ramblers are out and the Cardinals getting ready to start their season here as well. The Ramblers will be kicking off, going right to left on your radio dial with white blue trim on their uniforms, gray pants with some blue trim, white helmets with a blue a line across from uh, the back to the front in the middle of the helmet. And the Cardinals in their Cardinal red. They got some black on there, some wavy white lines, the white helmets with Cardinal on the side. As the Ramblers, I'll have the starters for you in a moment, are going to try an onside kick right off the bat. It was caught, and then it was caught, and then it was picked up, and now the Cardinals end up with it. Boy, they had a golden opportunity to recover that football. Did Winona Cotter, but coming out of there with it, I think, was Brecken Catterlick. So a good job by Brecken because uh, that was definitely a surprise, I thought. From the 49-yard line of Cotter starts the Cardinals. So they gave him good starting field position here for the Cardinals. Under center, of course, is Elliot Velen, their senior quarterback now. They pitch it out left. He breaks a tackle. He's like the first down. Boy, what a tough run that was by Derek Sando. The senior running back takes it all the way down for a first down to the 36 yard line. Boy, that was an awesome run. Looked like he was going to be brought down for a loss. He was not going to go down. Well, Coach Beckman was right. He said a lot of these guys pretty much lived in the weight room this summer, put on some muscle. And you could see that evident right there. The center is Matt Friesen. He's a senior. The right guard, Joseph Kunz, is a senior as he drops back, looks, uncorks, throws. He's got his man, but it was incomplete, underthrowing a little bit there. Tried to get the ball out to Oliver Lindemann. There was a taller defensive back that cut down uh, the distance between him and Lindemann and kind of got in front of the vision of Lindemann, I think, on that play. It's coming to the sideline. To get the play was Velen Sando. 
Mark Barner is the other running back. He's a junior. It's a senior-dominated team here, as, as Coach Beckman said, all 11 starters back on offense. As he hands it off, he faked the pitch and handed it up the middle. It's going to be a pickup of about three yards on the play. Hand off to Brock Barner. As Barner was the ball carrier. So it's going to be third down. Oil, that great field position they had to start with on the onside kick was not successful by the Ramblers. But I think you're probably in two down territory here. High formation as Velen looks out over the defense, takes the snap, drops back, looks, steps, throws off to his right. He's got his man. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. And he's going to be run out of bounds as he completed it. Hudson Dillon. Dillon is basketball too. He's just such a good athlete and a nice young man too. Is Hudson Dillon? As he's off to the left in this formation, he got the first down. They're at the 15-yard line. It's first and ten in the eye. Or actually split formation this time there's a quick pitch left and he drops the football as he's running where well, he dropped it again and O'Connor's gonna get the ball he was running with the ball that just came out of his hands and then he recovered it and then he wasn't able to secure it again oh my all out to the left that time it's gonna be a fumble recovery and Cotter will start first and 10 from the 16-yard line. There was nobody out there. I mean, nobody. It was nothing but green. Went on a right <laughs> Maybe his eyes got wide as the Grand Canyon, right, seeing all that green grass, and then you forget to secure the ball. So the Cardinals go on defense. And the shotgun is the Rambler. It says Cotter on the side of his helmet. The handoff on the first play... Might be a surprise, but they didn't get much. They got maybe two yards to the 18. It'll be second and eight. Second and eight from the 18. Well, if the Cardinals can get a three and out here, then no damage done, right? It's unfortunate they couldn't take advantage of that great field position, but you heard Coach Beckman say before the game, if you make a mistake, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to flush it out of your system and move on. And he's right. Quarterback for the Ramblers. As I did get the coach to mark down their starters here, whips it out to the right. I don't think it was caught. Nope. That would have been far short of the first down. It's going to be third and long here. Third and long. So third and eight. Zach Spiton is their quarterback. He's a senior. They don't have heights or weights listed for either team, so that's why I'm not giving you them. As a senior quarterback sees a blitz, and he gets drilled as he releases that ball, and that's why he didn't complete it. Beelan was coming on a blitz from one side, and a big old lineman drilled him as he was releasing the football. That threw the accuracy off on the throw. So they'll have to punt, and the Cardinals should get good field position. Going back to receive the punt is going to be Oliver Lindemann. He's standing at about the 49. Boy, is he fun to watch in hockey, too. He can skate. Of course, he can run fast. You would think you could skate fast, right? So a long count here on the punt. Counting the guys is the punter who is Luke Gardner. He's a senior. High snap, but he corrals it, runs to his right, and kicks it. 
Linneman's going to catch it at the 46. He's at the 50. He's at the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25. And he'll be, ooh, a face mask. Yeah, his face mask was grabbed at about the 19-yard line. That'll tack more on that run. So he took it from the 46 all the way down to the 19, 46 of not not 46 of Cotter, but the 46 of the Carls. There's another flag at the 45. That might be an illegal block of some sort. We'll see. His, his head was clearly turned around by somebody grabbing his face mask. So the officials are sitting here trying to sort all this out here. We do have an illegal block on the Cardinals and a face mask on the Ramblers. And so nothing happens. Cardinals are going to have the ball at the, I think they marked it at the 18. I thought he went out at the 19. So at the 18-yard line, it'll be first and 10. Oh, I'm sorry. They're going to kick it over. That's right. Offsetting penalties, it's a do-over. So he's going to kick it. We'll see if Lineman can do it again. Lineman's going to catch this at the 42. He's at the 45, the 50, and he tried to go up the middle. Now he bounces it outside. He broke one tackle, but he's only going to get to the 45. So that's quite a loss <laughs> of yardage. You were at the 19 before, and now you're at the 45 for the Cardinals. No score yet. We have nine minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Cardinals take over first and 10. That's I'll try to keep you updated on how the Gophers are doing. If I can get them on my phone here. They're not even listed on my phone under ESPN. <laughs> they don't exist according to ESPN. Double receivers left and right. Elon drops back, looks, looks, throws to his left. He's got his man out. Oh, nice catch. Wow. That's the athlete. Out to Dylan. He just threw it to a spot, and Dylan went and got it. That's all you can say about that. He elevated. He threw it high. The defensive back was completely turned around, and Dylan just went up and got the ball. Just got the ball. You see a goal for score there? I don't see a goal for score there. Like I say, ESPN doesn't think we exist. <laughs> huh? Okay, but where is it on the phone? So he's in the gun this time. Beelan looks left. Now he's going to dart to his right. Looks, looks, throws on the run. He's got his man on a crossing pattern. He'll be taken out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. The 12-yard line. As the ball's at the 12, it'll be first and 10, Cardinals. They were down here before and ended up with a turnover. <laughs> uh, that's on national television, too, the uh, Gopher game. Elon fakes a handoff, rolls to his right. He's got a man in the end zone, didn't want to go there. And then he's going to throw down the field. And a 12-yard touchdown pass to Dillon. Of course, I couldn't see that corner, I guess. Comes with 8 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. So I think they're going to go for two here. Double receivers left and right. Veland rolls to his right, looks, throws to his right, man wide open. Man, that, was, that wasn't even close. He threw it to Dillon for the two-point conversion. He just gets that separation on the play. Score now, B.A. Cardinals eight, Winona Cotter zero. So the 
Cardinals take an 8-0 lead. Our broadcast to service of Bethlehem Academy. Also, Malika's Auto Body here in Faribault. Garlic's Water Conditioning. By Federated Mutual Insurance. Faribault Air Conditioning and Heating. Amesbury Truth. And First United Bank. So the Cardinals are ahead eight to nothing. Had they not had the fumble, they might be up sixteen to nothing. No kick from the forty yard line. Sandoz going to tee it up. Back deep for the Ramblers. On the near side is Dane Guzzo, a sophomore. And on the far side is Luke Gardner, the senior. So Sando, make sure everybody's in their right place. He's got the ball on the tee at the 40-yard line, middle of the field. Waiting for the official to say, go ahead. He does. Here's the kick. It's an end-over-end -end kick that takes him back to about the 8. He's at the 10, the 15. Stutter steps close to the 20. Bounces it outside. He's at the 30. He's at the 40. And he's going to be brought down. Boy, what a great return. No flags either. Out to the 41-yard line of the Cardinals. By Luke Gardner. So Gardner takes it all the way back to the 41-yard line Noah of B.A. A fantastic run by Gardner. Well, that's something that they're not going to be real happy about there, the coaches. On the special teams, he just ran up the far sideline. Nobody was even able to get over there and, and uh, nobody was even able to get over there and push him out of bounds. He was right by the sideline. So he's in the gun, is Spiten. He'll fake a handoff, he'll fake another one, he'll run up the middle and he'll pick up a couple of yards. Remember, he's back about seven yards before he gets the ball. On the tackle that time for the Cardinals on defense was uh, Matt Friesen. Michael Crone is the nose tackle. The ends are Willie Potter and Matt Friesen. The linebackers are Hudson Dillon, Tommy Coons, Mark Barner, Derek Sando, and Lucas Karen. Oliver Lineman and Andrew Karen are the corners. And Elliot Veland is the safety. Very athletic backfield there. And as you heard Jim Beckman say, if you heard the start of our broadcast, he's got as good a line as he's had in his five years. A fake handoff and a throw out to the left, and the guy was wide open. Somebody blew an assignment there, but he didn't catch the ball. Might have done a peekaboo where you look down the field before you secure the ball and run down the field. They tried to get it out to Tyler Sturm, a senior. So they're going to mark the ball. The officials trying to figure out what to do here. They got a penalty against the Ramblers. And he takes it back to about the 43. 7.21 to go first quarter, 8-0. Bethlehem Academy leads in their season opener here at beautiful Bruce Smith Field. Not too many settings as beautiful as this with the water in the background and all the mature trees. As he drops back, looks to his right, and the man did a complete Turnaround to catch that ball. Did a nice job there. Takes it down to about the 34. Bringing him down that time for the Cardinals was Oliver Lindemann. But he's going to make it a third and short. It'll be third down at about three. Ball's going to be at the 34-yard line of B.A. Really nice kick return. Brought him all the way down here. Young man took it from the eight all the way down to the 40 of Bethlehem Academy. So double receivers left, or actually triple receivers left, and the receiver right. They love to spread you out all over the field. As he barks out the signals, he's going to run up the middle, and he's going to be brought short of the first down, I do believe. 
keeper by Jack Spiten. Michael Crone on the tackle for the Cardinals. Nice job there by Crone, the nose tackle. He was he was on his ankles before he could get much farther. So it's going to be fourth down and about two. And they're going for it here. Down eight, nothing. We got a different quarterback in there, so. It's the running back at quarterback. He's going to take the snap, direct snap, and he's got the first down. He went right up the middle and got the first down all the way down to the 28, a pickup of four. It'll be first down Ramblers. Dane Guzzo with the so a good job there by the Rambler. Guzzo, the sophomore, he's listed as a quarterback, came in, but he, he's been a running back. At the Cardinal 28-yard line. He's listed as a non-starter on offense, but does start on defense. The coach gave me his starters. Dropping back, Biden. He's going to roll off to his right. He's being chased. He whips it off to the right, and it's caught right near the sideline at about the 19. And again, Lineman gets the stop. As they get the ball out to Gardner, we've already seen what he could do on that kick return. Five minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Gordy Kosfeld here at the Power 96 Sports Microphone. The Cardinals of Bethlehem Academy of their season opener in high school football against the Winona Carter Ramblers. Couple receivers left. Balls on the far side hash mark. There's the snap of a handoff up the middle again and they're finding some room up there as he takes it down to close to the 15 yard line. Be second down at about seven. We got a tall receiver. Again, they don't have the heights and weights out here, but this young man towers over some of the others here for the Winona Cotter Ramblers. Desmond Matthews Jr. He's a senior. Was not listed as a starter on this roster by the coach. He's off to the right. Looks like you could run a fade with him. So Spite and Bark something out to his right. Man comes in motion. He's going to come up the middle again. And he's going to be not too far from the first down. It's going to be third down and short. It'll be third down about four. Tommy Kunze on the tackle. Kunze makes the stop. Four on the play, third and four for the Ramblers. Biden has a guy move to his right. That's Tyler Sturm. As he looks out over the Cardinal defense, drops three steps, four steps. Now drops back some more, and he'll throw in retreat mode, and that could have been picked off. He was inside the five-yard line. It's hard to get a throw accurately when you're backpedaling, and that's exactly what he was doing. He was backpedaling. And had the Cardinal been able to step in front, they might have been able to get a pick. So it's going to be fourth down and four. Ball is at the 12-yard line of the Cardinals. In that tall... Young man, Desmond Matthews Jr. is off to the right. And he's got some height. Looks like the Cardinals have matched up pretty well with him, though. As he drops back, looks right. That's exactly where he's... Oh, man, did they get the catch? It's going to be a first down. He ruled it a catch. Pass is caught by Luke Gardner. He did catch the ball. So it's going to be a first down. They went right to the chain and got it. First and goal for the Ramblers. Boy, it looked like Velan was right there at the same time. And the Rambler drive continues. It's been an impressive one. Down 8 nothing, with 3 minutes and 39 seconds to go in the first quarter. And the Ramblers right to left on your radio dial. As one of the Cardinals <laughs> helping... One of the Ramblers with a shoulder pad. Now that's sportsmanship. That was Dylan, by the way. Handoff goes up the middle again. They're finding a lot in the middle. They got to make some adjustments there. 
as he takes it down inside the five to nearly the four yard line. On the carry that time was Logan Banneke. He's a freshman. As Crone is credited with a tackle. Coming racing off the field is Lucas Karen, the sophomore linebacker. Second and goal at the four yard line. And I think they're going to get a little more beef in there now, are the Cardinals. He's in the gun, is Spiten. Man in motion. Gardner, ooh, just as he got the ball, it was almost tackled. Well, that was an awesome play. <laughs> an absolute disruption of the play was made by Tommy Kunze, the sophomore. As he got that ball, he was almost tackled. You know, he got there the same time the ball did. That was impressive. So it'll be third down and goal at the eight. Third and goal now at the eight-yard line for the Ramblers. So they've had some success going up the gut here. We'll see if they try to continue that. I suppose it's a quick hitter, right? Don't have to stain your block all that long. The snap is made. He drops back, looks right. He throws right. Guy was wide open. That's Gardner. He's going to be brought down by Linneman. And it'll be fourth and goal. Ball's at the six. Minute 40 to go in the first quarter. So here it is. Let's hear you, Cardinal fans. Fourth and goal at the six. Ramblers right to left. Fighting, getting people in their proper positions. Just want to keep it in front of you, Cardinals, and keep them out of the end zone. Man goes in motion. That Matthews from left to right. I think we're going to have a timeout here. With a minute 16 to go in the first quarter. The score, 8-0, Cardinals. You're listening to Bethlehem Academy Football on Power 96. Well, the Gophers are up 3-0 in the second quarter. <laughs> Over in the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Here the Cardinals are up 8-0. And Winona Cotter is at the 6 on a 4th and goal. So barring a penalty. It's do or die here for Winona Cotter on this drive. And they would hate to see this drive end with nothing. So that's why they took the time out to get the play they wanted to get. With a minute 16 to go here in the first quarter. As they come out from the sideline, Cardinals are already waiting for them. Biden's in the gun. Gardner's in the slot right, by the way. He's been his number one target so far. He takes the snap, drops back, looks, looks, looks. Cox fires. Nope, he's going to throw on the run. It's popped up in the air, and it's no good. Yep. Cardinals take over on downs. First and ten at their six-yard line. They flushed him out of the pocket, and that was that. Veland went over there and knocked the ball down. He looked like a volleyball player on that play. So the Cardinals will take over left to right on your radio dial with the ball on the six yard line. Their own six. With the I formation, Veland fakes the handoff. He's going to throw off to the right and uh, legs get tangled and it's going to be a pass interference. Veland pass intended for Willie Potter is incomplete. Two flags on the play. Well, I saw the flag on the one side, I didn't see the first flag, so we'll see what that's all about. Holding 
on the Cardinals. Pass interference on the Ramblers. We had another offsetting penalties. Penalties offset. <laughs> Replay first down. Boy, earlier the Cardinals had a great punt return. They have came back because of offsetting penalties. That's the first game. You would expect maybe a few more penalties than normal. Minute five to go. First quarter, 8 nothing. Bethlehem Academy leads. Sandoz deep in the eye. He's going to pitch it to him. He's going to try and bounce it outside right. They do a nice job of stringing this play out, but Sando did a great job of picking a hole and just getting as much as he could. He'll take it out to about the 15. See where they mark the ball down. It might be just shy of that. And it is. So a good healthy gain considering. It'll be second down and two. As Veland gets a lot of action in in terms of mileage running to the sideline to get the prey and then going back to the huddle. Hey, he's a wrestler. He's in shape. In motion goes the Cardinal, and he's going to pitch it to Lineman. Lineman's going to bounce it outside. He's at the 20. He's at the 25. He's going to be run out of bounds around the 30, 31-yard line. And I don't see any flags on this play, but... Tackle by Isaac Mikey. So he takes it out to the... Conclusion of our game, by the way, while our Malik has auto body crunch time cardinal or cardinals of the game, courtesy of Malik has auto body fareable when it's crunch time. We hope you don't suffer from crunch time with your vehicle, but if you do, the place to take it is Malik has auto body. They're beautiful new shop. Wow. On the north end of town there across from the new uh, quick trip kitty corner from Casey's not far from the new roundabout that's going in as Veland takes the ball. It's going to be a bootleg right. Cuts inside, and he's going to be taken down at about the 33 or 4-yard line. Veland with the keeper. Main guy on the tackle that time for Winona Cotter was Caden Dykeson. He's a senior. Dykeson on the tackle. I think that's the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Bethlehem Academy 8. Winona Cotter, nothing. Score, Cardinals, eight. Cardinals will have it second down and six on the 33 when the second quarter begins from Bruce Smith Field in Faribault here on KQCL-FM, Faribault, Minnesota, a town square media station, 95.9 FM. The best way to listen is on the free Power 96 app. You can listen worldwide. Well, we get ready to start the second quarter. Scores 8-0. Bethlehem Academy leads. Great to have you along here on Power 96. Tomorrow night we'll have the Faribault Falcons here at home. It's kind of handy to have both teams at home in their opener. And that's why we thought, hey, let's, let's see them both in their home openers. Why not? So they switch hands. That means the Cardinals are going right to left and the Ramblers left to right here in the second quarter. There's the snap. He's going to throw out to his left and nobody was there. So somebody may have run a wrong route there. The, uh, there are a couple of receivers in the neighborhood. I don't know if it was actually meant for one guy or the other. There's nobody there. So that tells you somebody probably ran the wrong route. As Veland goes to the sideline, gets the play. Not even that much, but they said they 
So there's the eye formation with him under center. Veland rolls right into a blitzing guy, and he breaks that tackle, bounces it outside. He's at the 35, the 40, the 45, and he runs out of bounds. At about the 48-yard line, it'll be a first down for the Cardinals. Boy, that was a great Houdini act by Mr. Veland because it looked like he was dead to rights. And he a sidestep one tackler. Raced outside, bounced it outside even more. Nobody could catch up with him, and then he gets the first down out to the 47-yard line. That was a highlight reel run that you can see on FCTV because Troy Temple's here doing the video work. Ball at the 47. Right to left go the Cardinals. Again, I have formation with Velen under center. Linham is a wing back right. He's going to drop back and throw off to the right. He's got his man on a crossing pattern. Potter's going to take it for a first down to about the 40-yard line. Boy, they've got all kinds of weapons on this Cardinal offense. I wonder if his middle name is Harry. <laughs> Willie? No, he's not Harry Potter, huh? <laughs> I'd be tempted. He was magical on that play. So again, I formation. Lineman is the wing back left. He's going to roll to his left, the right handed quarterback. Rolls to his left some more. Tucks it under his left wing. Does Velen. And I love his patience. He does get. A, well, he's going to be short of the first down, I think, but he. Takes it all the way down to, well, maybe I, mis I misread it. He did get the first down down to the 29. Gain of 12 on the play, and that's another Cardinal first down. He did not run full speed there because he had to wait for some blockers. The patience was awesome to see. Tackle by Isaac Mikey. And Brett Bison. First and ten Cardinals. Well, I love what Coach Beckman told us before the game. The number one thing is to go out there and have fun. Ovilan is under center. He'll take the snap. He'll hold Sando. Sando stiff arms a guy, and the guy grabs his arm, and he might have face masked him too again. The flag came out like it might be a face mask. We'll see if that's the call. Yep. It was a face mask. Personal foul face mask. That's the only way he was going to get Sando down. <laughs> oh, it was on the blocker. It was on the Cardinals. Not too often do you see that called. So the, the offense gets called for the face mask. Which obviously was away from the play. It wasn't Sando who did it. Eight nothing Cardinals lead. Ten fifty two to go in this first half. For the well, they got to go to darn near Warsaw to get a first down here. Right to left on your radio dial. Go the Cardinals. The officials stopped it for a moment. Now they crank up the clock again. Nevelin takes the snap. He was in the gun. Throws it out to the left to Dillon. Dillon makes the catch. You throw anything in his zip code, he's going to catch it. And he takes it all the way down to the, about the 15-yard line. You just throw it to a spot, and he'll get it. And that's another Cardinal first down. <laughs> Wouldn't you be tempted to throw it to him every play almost? <laughs> I mean, the guy catches everything. First and 10 Cardinals. But they got so many weapons on this team, it's beautiful to see. You do want to spread the ball around so they can't key on any one guy. Oh, it's first down. Remember that penalty took them way back. They gain it right away. They're at the 15. Split backs behind Velen. Barner and Sando fakes the handoff, takes it himself. He's got green spaces. He's at the 10. He's at the 5, and he gets popped out of bounds. Keeper by Velen. 
as Gardner popped him out of bounds. Hit out of bounds by Luke Gardner. But not before he takes it inside the five. First down. The ball's at the three yard line. First and goal, Cardinals at the Rambler three yard line. And my pen went somewhere where I don't know. On the floor it was. So it's first and, or excuse me, it's, yeah, it's first and goal from the three. Barner stands to the right of Velan, double receivers right. Sandals in the slot left. Dillon's outside him. He's going to whip it over to Dillon. Little curl into the end zone. Touchdown! Dillon to Dillon for the Cardinal. Touchdown! So a three yard TD to Dillon. He's going to catch it if you throw it to him. I don't think there's any question about that. Comes with 9.47 to go in the first half. They'll go for two again here. Barner to the left of Velan. Sando slot left. Linneman wide right. Handoff goes, and he's going to get into the end zone. Hand off to Willie Potter for the two so Potter gets the two-point run. <laughs> Almost wrote Harry down on my, my pad. Well, let's give a listen to the Cardinal Band. Wow, they're sounding in mid-season form. Good job there by the Cardinal Band. So a 16-0 Bethlehem Academy lead. And tomorrow night we'll be on Power 96 with the Faribault Falcons hosting St. Anthony Village. I don't remember Cardinal or the Falcons ever playing St. Anthony Village in football. They did play them in softball last spring in a tournament up at St. Anthony Village. So Sando will tee it up. Middle 40-yard line. And he boots it. End over end boot. It's going to be taken at about the 15. He's at the 20, the 25, the 30. Remember, they had a great return earlier. There's a flag on the play. In the vicinity, it looks like it might be like an offside or something. We'll see. We'll see what they do with the flag. So. Oh, he got a hold on uh, Cotter. Well, where that flag was, you wouldn't think that one is what it would be. Flag's only like 12, 13 yards down the field from where it was kicked off. But that's the call. And the officials are marking it off here. So they're going to start this drive at the 17-yard line, it looks like. So from the 17, it'll be first and 10, left to right in your radio dog with the Winona Connor Ramblers. Jack Spiten, the senior, is their quarterback. He's got double receivers right, single receiver to the left. Actually, double receivers left. The guy was hiding behind the, tight, the tackle. First and 10 at their 27 yard line. It's the 27 yard line. 
So first and 10 for the 27. Left to right go the Ramblers. Spiten is in the gun. He was by himself. He runs up the middle again. And again, he's got good yardage. Sandal's going to make the stop. Loses his helmet in the process. Out at about the 35-yard line, maybe the 36. There was nothing real fancy about that. It'll be second down and about a yard and a half. Second and about a yard and a half. Again, staying in a quarterback is Guzzo. Appears to be the runner of the two. He's going to take it and run up the middle on a. Oh, he almost lost the ball. He's going to be swarmed over and not get any yardage. He might have even lost a yard. First guy there, I think, was Velen. And the other guy there for the. Cardinals on defense was uh, Kunze. So he did lose a yard. Balls at the 35, roughly, just over it. Wide left goes Preston Mikey. He's a junior. They got, they got a wide right. Wing back right. Back standing to the left of the quarterback. Takes it again. Runs up the middle again. And he might have the first down. The ball comes out at the end. We'll see if it's a fumble or not. He threw down the baggie like it's a fumble. The baggie went down. It's a fumble. Recovered by the Cardinals. And I think Phelan got it. Looks like he came out of there with it. Seven minutes and 58 seconds to go. The Cardinals will take over, and they'll have the ball at the, let's see here, 39-yard line of the Ramblers. Well, they can blow this game open here with a touchdown right here. They're already up 16-0. Going to get an extra water break here, it appears. Our game time temperature was 77 at 71 now. Air quality is at 39. Beautiful night for football. This weekend, the State Amateur Baseball Tournament concludes. It was a lot of fun calling the Laker game last Sunday. Unfortunately, the wrong team won, but it was a great game. 2-1 to one was the final score. It had everything you wanted to have in a, in a baseball game. Patrichka just pitched his tail off for the Lakers through 143 pitches. 103 of the 143, if I remember right, were strikes. And New Ulm, frankly, manufactured both of their runs. Suicide Squeeze was the game winner. Doesn't get much more exciting than that. So for the 39, it'll be first and 10 Bethlehem Academy after the recovery on the fumble. As Veland's in the gun, takes the snap, drops back, looks. He's got time. He throws it out to Sando. He's going to curl after coming to get the ball. And he breaks one tackle, breaks. Oh, he broke another. How did he do that? Boy, he could pack a wall if he's just a little guy, but he has got those strong legs. He bouncing off the of people. He looked like a... a Pinball, pinball machine is what he looked like. <laughs> going off this guy, boing, going to the other place, boing. And that's a Cardinal first down. So he did get the first down. <laughs> that was a tough run, man. 27-yard line. So a 12-yard pickup. Potter's off to the right. Barner's off to the right. Sandals off to the right. They got all four receivers off to the right. And then another one off to the left. Velen's alone in the backfield. This will spread him out if he wants to run. He's going to throw left. They got isolation. And it is a... Oh, he didn't make the catch. How often did Dylan not make the catch? I love that play. They have four guys off the right. Did Dylan was in single coverage off to the left. And nine times out of ten, he's going to make that catch. 
Unfortunately, that was the, you know, the one time out of 10 that he didn't. But I like the play. It puts something in the minds of your opponents, that's for sure, when they're watching film. We're going to put a taller guy out there on Dylan now. That Matthews kid. There's a quick pitch right. Sando, he's got nowhere to go. He breaks a couple of tackles. He comes back the other way. He's at the 30, the 25, and then he'll be brought down. Man, he is really <laughs> incredible at breaking tackles. And like I said to Coach Beckman, we can't afford to get anybody hurt out here. He got popped pretty good at the end of that play. So he takes it down to the 21 yard line. Again, we got four receivers off to the right and Dylan off to the left. He's got Matthews, the taller guy on him. He's gonna whip it off to the right, Lineman. He's gonna find his way all the way down to the 10 or close to it. So Oliver Lineman zips down the field. And that's another Cardinal first down. Boy, the Cotter Rambler linebacker got over there really good. Brett Beesens, Be Be he's a senior. First and 10 Cardinals at the 11 yard line. So it's going to be first and 10. You could get a first down and not score from the 11. 16 nothing Cardinals lead it. And now we got an adjustment, I guess, of something with Sando. Barner's in front of him, Velen under center. He's going to hand it off to Sando. He's going to bounce it up the middle, and he's going to go right to the end zone. Touchdown! An 11-yard touchdown run. Boy, I love the way that young man runs. Five minutes and 37 seconds to go. Even when I was young, I couldn't run like that. <laughs> he was on a mission on that carry. You could see he just kind of lowered his head, and I'm getting in that end zone, and he did. So I'm going to go for two again. Barner stands to the right of Veland. Sandoz in the slot left, man out left, goes man goes in motion. Velen takes the snap and hurdles over the would-be tackler for two. So Velen gets the two-point run. And the Cardinals are in control with five minutes and 37 seconds to go in this first half. It's Bethlehem Academy 24, Winona Cotter, nothing. Five minutes, 37 seconds to go in this first half. Fairable Bethlehem Academy has been impressive. They have had a mistake, a fumble, but they didn't let it affect them. As Sando tees it up, he might have to put his toe on ice if they keep scoring like this. Moving right to left. As Sando approaches and he kicks it. And over end, he kicked it away from the receivers. I like that. Has to pick it up on the near side. He runs to the middle of the field, tries to bounce it outside. He's still running. Now he's going to be taken down at about the 27-yard line. Boy, he got a lot more out of that than I thought he would. Returned by Luke Gardner. Lucas Karen that Gardner can ball. run. You got that other long run on a kickoff. I think if I were the Cardinals, I wouldn't kick it on his side of the field. Rambler 
They got two guys back there. Kick it to the other guy. So for the 27s, first and 10, Cotter. And frankly, they need to score. Dropping back Spiten. He's going to whip it off the right. The ball was almost caught, and it was almost intercepted. It was a high throw. It was intended for Tyler Sturm. But he rifled it out there and leaping at the last instant. Was Potter. Potter nearly knocked that down. I'm sure he got in the vision of the quarterback, too. And he had to throw it higher than he wanted to because Potter was up there. Those so Spiton drops back, looks, throws to his left. He's got his man at the chain. He's caught right in front of the defender on the play that time for the Cardinals was Andrew Karen. And he may have come up just short of the first down. I thought he was right at the chain, but I guess he comes up short. So it's going to be third down and one. And this is not two down territory. So the Cardinals can get a stop here. They'll get good field position when they get the ball back. Trips to the right. Single receiver left. Biden takes the snap. He'll hand it off to try and get that one. And I uh, don't know if he got it. It all depends on the spot, folks. He, he had to get a yard. It all depends upon the spot. And they're going to measure here. And it looks close enough to measure. All they had to do was get a yard. But remember, he's deep in the backfield when he hands it off. He wasn't under center or anything. So we'll see. The chain gang's going to bring it out. It looks like two links of the chain. Back in the old days, I used to say it's a Tammy Faye Baker eyelash, but nobody would remember who that is nowadays. That was back in the old days. So it's fourth down, and they're going for it. Wow, they're going for it on a fourth and inches. Uh, I don't know. If they don't make it, you're handing the ball to your opponent who's already up 24 nothing. So they're making some noise, and he got it. They have really done a good job up the middle. That's something that the Cardinals will be talking about at halftime. They got a, they got a brick wall that middle of the line there. So it'll be first and ten from the 39-yard line. Bethlehem Academy has had two passing and one rushing touchdown. They're up 24-0. They've made all their two-point conversions. As he takes the snap, looks left, throws right. He's got his man out there. Looks like it might be Sturm, and he's going to take it down to the 48-yard line. And he's slow to get up on the play. Velan was over there. Lineman also is over there, and, and he's feeling a little groggy, it looks like. He's out on the grass. Injury time out on the field. I did not think it was all that hard to tackle, but maybe I didn't see the full impact, I guess. Balls of the 47 yard line. And it was Sturm. And they're attending to him on the near sideline. Next week for the Cardinals, volleyball team travels to Stewartville on Tuesday, followed by a home game against Blooming Prairie on Thursday. Friday night, the football team travels to Rushford Peterson. Well, they are still attending to him. Uh, Dusty Deans, who of course is the fire chief, knows his first aid. He's out there attending to him along with, looks like a trainer from uh, the Ramblers. Scores 24 nothing, 418 to go in the first half.
Bell looks like he's coming off under his own power, and that's good to see. And it looks like it might have something to do with his right hand, or I, I noticed that Dusty was asking him to flex his hand there. And he's holding it in front of him, not using it at the moment. Be a shame to get hurt in a season open. Well, it's a shame to get hurt any time. What am I saying? Four minutes and 17 seconds to go. Clock has been wound up. It is second down and a couple at the 47-yard line of Winona Cotter. Bethlehem Academy leads it 24 to nothing. Biden's in the gun, points to his chest. Man goes in motion. He drops back, throws down the field, and it is incomplete off the fingertips. Barner was in coverage. Looked like he might have had a step on Barner, but couldn't make the catch. Went off his fingertips. It'll be third down and a couple from the 47. Trying to scan the sideline here and see if. Third and two for the Ramblers. Yep, Sturm is on the bench over there. Trips to the left this time. As he takes the snap, Guzzle takes the handoff. He bounces it outside. He's at the 50. He's got the first down. As he takes it down into Cardinal territory to about the 47 yard line. Tackled by Derek Sando. So it'll be first down for an Ona Cotter. First and ten Ramblers at the Cardinal 47 yard line. We have three minutes and 33 seconds to go until halftime. Double receivers right. As he drops back, looks to his left. He's going to throw to his left. He's got his man out there. It is not caught. Boy, he had him. And they almost connected as he tried to get it to the speedster, Gardner. Had Gardner been able to haul that in, he'd be down around the 10-yard line. So they were going for the gusto. I'll make it second and 10 for the 47. Actually, they moved the football back a little bit. 316 to go in the half. Trips to the right this time. One receiver off to the left. They're trying that isolation play too. As he hands off to Guzzo, his backup, and uh, Guzzo uh, doesn't guzz too many yards. He goes for a couple, maybe. Be third down and eight. As uh, Potter and Sando were there. Being of two on the play, third and eight for the Ramblers. So on a third down and eight, they're going to have trips off to the left again. This time the ISO is off to the right. The guy out there is Gabe Stewart. As he drops back, whips it off to the left. They had a receiver screen set up, and it's too high over his head. And believe it or not, you talk to quarterbacks, they'll tell you that's one of the hardest throws to make out there in the flat. Most quarterbacks would love to just throw it down the field over the shoulder rather than whip it out there in the flat like that. So it's going to be fourth down and eight, and they're going for it. Two and a half minutes to go in the half. They have to get to the 38. Dropping back, he looks, he looks, he throws to his left, and it is incomplete. Intended, Intended for Gardner again. <laughs> Velan got over there to help out his buddy Dylan, and I don't know if Gardner didn't look back for the ball or what. It looked like he was open initially, but yeah, the ball wasn't delivered very accurately. So Cardinals will take over at the 45-yard line. Twenty-eight 
24 nothing Cardinals. Boy, could they blow this open big time with a touchdown here. It would be on the uh, you had running time in the fourth quarter. There's those quads to the left and isolation to the right. They're going to keep trying this play, and it's incomplete. Nice breakup. That was a very nice breakup. They tried to get it to Dillon down there on the isolation, and he might have hurt himself on the breakup. Gabe Stewart made the stop, but Stewart is holding his ribs, or he was holding his ribs. He's still in the game, but I think he's hurt, and I'd try that play again. He's trying to walk it off here. And he might have to, he's kind of looking down there to see if he's got any bruising or something. Well, he's not going to cover him anyway. So, Beelan's going to whip off to the right this time. It's caught by Lineman. What a great catch he made, too. He just planned out, stole that ball. <laughs> Because Winona Cotter wasn't looking back for the ball, he reached over the top of the defender and grabbed it out of the air. Oliver Lindemann. Man, oh man, that was such an athletic move. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to be a quarterback for these guys? You just throw it in the area and they'll catch it. For the most part. So it's first to ten. 28 of Winona Cotter. Veland under center hands it off to Sando and he loses his footing trying to make a cut. Looked like he might have been able to run for a while, but he lost his footing. No gain on the play. Second and ten, Cardinals. I have to get him some Burkhart Smeyer shoes cleats. Minute 52 to go. Here in the first half. There's some other high school football games all over our great state. And I'm going to get more tomorrow. As there's a quick pitch, Sando, he's going to hand it off. A little trickery here. Coming around is Lineman. He's at the 30, the 20. He's at the 10. And he breaks the tackle and he goes in for the... Well, I guess not. I, <laughs> I couldn't see the near side. It looked like he was going to go in for the touchdown, but he stopped short of it. Looks like he's got it at the two-yard line. First and goal at the two-yard line. So first and goal from the two. Let's see if they just power it in. Milan's in the gun. Marner to his right. He rolls to his right. He stops and he throws over the middle. And did Lineman catch it? No. He's got the ball, but he evidently didn't catch it. So, he can try it again. Second and goal from the two. Beelan again will not be under center here. Got Barner to his right. Potter's off to the right. Sando goes in motion. He hands it off to Sando. He tries to bounce it outside. Needed a block, didn't get it. And he's going to try to work his way toward the end zone, but he gets the touchdown. How did he do that? It looked like he was dead to rights, and he went right to the corner pylon, and he went in for the touchdown. Wow. Sando on a two-yard TD, his second running touchdown. And the Cardinals have kind of put this one out of reach in the first half. As the two-point conversion is going to be good. It was good. 
Barner took it right up the gut and got the two point conversion. So perfecto other than one fumble, unless there was a penalty on the play. And it looks like there may have been a penalty on the play. They're marching it back. Thirty to nothing. Yeah, they're gonna have to do it over. So Velan is gonna drop back. He's gonna look. He's gonna break a tackle. He's gonna bounce out to his right. He's gonna look. He's gonna zip it, and it is knocked away at the last instant. I think tried to get it to Potter. So the two-point conversion is not good. Pass incomplete. But hey. 30 to nothing, Bethlehem Academy, and we still have a minute 12 to go in the first half. I'm going to make a bold prediction here. We are going to see running time in this game. How's that for a bold prediction? Well, Sando is going to have to put his toe on ice here. Kick off again. <laughs> Halftime, I'm not sure if the B.A. band's going to entertain or not. We'll probably listen to a little bit of it. They do. And here's the kick. It's going to be returnable big time. He's at the 20. He's at the 25. He's at the 30. He bounces outside. This is Gardner. We got a flag on the play. It came from way back, and they still can't bring him down, and now they finally do bring him down, and he gets upset about the way they brought him down, and the official has to go in and kind of break things up a little bit. Well, you were refusing to go to the ground, and they put you on the ground, and you got upset. Andrew Karen and Noah Casper on the tackle for the Cardinals. So they're going to march this off. It's going to be a penalty against Cotter. And they put the ball. The officials all. He just, uh, he's going, where do I put this ball? <laughs> at first he was going to put it at the 19, then the 20, and then the. I thought he marked it at the 20, but we'll wait till he puts it down. Exactly one minute to go in the half. Well, if you're the Ramblers, do you try a bomb here? I mean, you're down 30 to nothing. You don't want to pick six, but there's really not a whole lot you can do. You don't want to take a knee, I wouldn't think. It's a little too much of a deficit to think about regrouping when you're down 30 to nothing. So balls at the 31. And it was going to be at the 20, so I don't know what happened there. The guy was standing at the 20 the whole time waiting for a ball, and all of a sudden they move it out to the 31. So Coach Beckman's wondering the same thing. Why is the ball there when you said it was there? And he said, Coach, this is my first game of the season, so okay. First and ten Ramblers at their thirty one yard line. And it, you know, I'm sure he's reffed a scrimmage or something, but anyway, double receivers right. A couple of receivers left, and including that tall Andrews. He drops back despite oh he got his arm hit as he was releasing the ball, and I thought his arm was coming forward. And they say it is. And yeah, they're right. Fumble on the play caused by Willie Potter. It's an incomplete pass. Recovered by, 28. Recovered by the Ramblers, Tyler Stern. So it'll be second down. Well, it's not an incomplete pass either. He lost yardage on the play. So evidently they did rule a fumble.
So those fighting's in the gun again. By the way, the young man that came out is back in. That's good to see as he runs up the middle. And, yep, they're just going to run out the clock here. That's the end of the first half. With the score 30 to nothing. You heard me right. 30 to nothing at halftime. Bethlehem Academy leads Winona Cotter. Now, I don't know if we're going to get any statistics or not. If we do, we'll share them with you. It's halftime at Bruce Smith Field. The Cardinals of Bethlehem Academy, 30. The Ramblers of Winona Cotter, nothing. Back in one minute. Well, it's halftime, 30 to nothing is our score. I'll run down the scoring here for you as best I can remember. <laughs> Actually, I did write it down, but sometimes I can't read my own writing. So the Cardinals looked like they were going to go down and score in the opening drive. They ended up turning it over. And there was a fumble, and it was recovered by the Winona Carter Ramblers. They went right down the field actually pretty well, but uh, Cardinals did stop them. Then there was a fumble by Cotter. As Cardinal started a drive on the 45-yard line. It ended with a 12-yard touchdown pass from Velan to Dillon. Eight minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. A two-point pass to Dillon also was good. It was 8-0. Then Velan recovered a fumble at the 16-yard line. This was after a long kickoff return by Gardner for Cotter. It took it all the way down to, uh, what was it, about the 40-yard line, something like that. Anyway, they got down to the 16, and Velan recovered a fumble. There were seven minutes. I didn't write the seconds down here. The next touchdown was a three-yard touchdown. Dillon. Two-point run by Potter. That was 9.47 to go. They got the ball at the Cotter 39-yard line. Ended up with an 11-yard touchdown run by Sando with 5.37 to go. Veland got the two-point conversion run. And Sando scored the Cardinals' last touchdown of the first half. They started the drive on the 45-yard line. Ended up punching it in from two yards out. The extra point was no good. That's the only thing that really hasn't gone right, that and the fumble for Bethlehem Academy in the first half. Cotter has not been close to a touchdown, really. 30 nothing is our score here at halftime as total domination is the way I would describe it, I guess, by Bethlehem Academy. The Ramblers are going to have some yards here in the first half, but it's the score that counts, right? And I'm sure the one thing that Coach Beckman and his staff are going to talk about here at halftime is we have to make adjustments to shore up the middle. They did get a fair amount of yardage 
by going up the middle, and other teams are going to see that on film and try to exploit that as well. So they got to see if they can't remedy that situation. It's about the only thing I think they need to worry about as they are in the locker room here at halftime. What a gorgeous night for football. We have a temperature reading right now of 70 degrees. Beautiful. Bruce Smith Field scene. They don't get much better than this. I have not been on the new Federated Insurance Field at Owatonna High School. Looks gorgeous from Highway 14. But I don't know if they're going to have the background scenery that we have here at Bruce Smith Field. I mean, it's just phenomenal. You know, Paul Geel Field is legendary, but, you know, and you got the bluffs in the background there behind the goalposts. But, I mean, looking off to the side, I mean, we just got the water here. It's just so awesome. I'll have more of your halftime. I'll try not to talk more about trees and water right after this timeout. Let's listen to the VA Pep Band. By the way, I was just looking at the Winona Cotter Rambler assistant coaches and Braxton Lindo, who went to high school at Cannon Falls, is an assistant coach on the Winona Cotter Rambler football team, Braxton Lindo. I just noticed that here as I was as I was looking. I I thought he was coaching there in Randolph. Uh, I get my Lindos confused every now and then. But it was kind of nice to note that. Right? Nice to note that. They had a drawing here in the program that was illustrated by Hao Zhu Ken, 2019 graduate. Illustration, they've got a, a menacing cardinal, rather muscular cardinal, holding a football. It looks pretty cool, to be quite honest. In uh, Hao Zhu Ken. I probably said that wrong. Of course, next Friday, these Cardinals travel to Rushford-Peterson. That's always a fun drive. The volleyball team has a couple of matches next week. It was fun to see them at Eden Prairie earlier this week. They really look good in the first set, and then, well, they had a few mistakes in the next couple of sets and ended up falling in three consecutive sets and losing in four sets to the Eden Prairie Eagles. But remember, Eden Prairie is one of your biggest school districts in the state, and obviously Bethlehem Academy is not. So that's why you play big com competition like that, so that when you get back to your own level of competition, it seems, 
like slow motion. <laughs> they were really getting burned quite a bit on the quick sets at the center of the net. I'm sure Coach Bothan and her staff will get that remedied as they take on the Stewartville Tigers next. The Faribault Falcons played Stewartville and got one set off them uh, earlier in the week. But they're always loaded, right? Stewartville is always loaded. And later in the week, the Cardinals will take on the awesome blossoms of Blooming Prairie in volleyball action. Just hard to believe school's already starting. It seems like just yesterday they were getting out. Yeah, that uh, match on Thursday will be their home opener at Van Orso in volleyball. So, we're looking forward to bringing you a, I think I got two more Cardinal football games on the schedule this year. See if they got the whole schedule in here, and I can remember which games they are. I'm doubtful that I will remember. And no, the schedule is not in here. So 30 nothing is our score. Bethlehem Academy leads here at halftime. You know, offensively, the Cardinals started Hudson Dillon at one of the receivers. He's a senior. Oliver Lindemann is a senior, another receiver. Willie Potter is listed as a tight end, but he flanks out quite a bit. He's a senior. Elliot Veland is their quarterback. He's a senior. Derek Sandal, Mark Barner are the running backs. Sandal's a senior. The left tackle is Brecken Catterlick. He's a sophomore. The left guard is Harrison Gibbs, a senior. Matt Friesen is the center, a senior. Right guard, Joseph Kunze is a senior. Michael Crone is the right tackle. He is also a senior. Then on defense, they started tonight. Michael Crone at nose tackle. These guys are all seniors, unless I otherwise specify. The ends are Willie Potter and Matt Friesen as they run a three-man front because they have so many good athletes. And so that's why they run with five linebackers here. Hudson Dillon, Tommy Kunze, Mark Barner, Derek Sando, and Lucas Karen are all listed as linebackers. And believe it or not, most of those are underclassmen. And then your cornerbacks, both seniors, are Oliver Lindemann and Andrew Karen. Elliot Veland is the senior safety for Bethlehem Academy. Back in the BA section this year are Goodyear and Blooming Prairie. They got moved down to Class A. They were in Class 2A the last few seasons. They're now back in Class A. And so the Cardinals section got a whole lot tougher. <laughs> Blooming Prairie traditionally very good in football. Likewise, good you. But Jim Beckman says that's something we can't control. All it tells us is if we do win our section, we got a really good shot when we get to the state tournament. I frankly like that attitude, right? There is nothing you can do about who they have in your section. Ramblers are back on the field doing their calisthenics. The Cardinals are not yet back on Bruce Smith Field. The scoreboard says B.A. in red, 30. Cotter in blue, nothing. Not a lot of Cotter fans are here across the way. There's a smattering of people, but not a lot of people came all the way from Winona to watch this Thursday night football game. I mean, to be quite honest with you, it does not look like there's even one or two people per player over on the other side of the field, but maybe some of them are on this side too, far as that goes. Brand new coach for the Faribault Falcons tomorrow night. I'll be curious to see if it draws a large crowd to see what the Falcons have in store. They're going to run the power... The power formation there, the power where they got the three backs standing beside each other, the power T or 
And, uh, you know, the quarterback is not under center or anything, and they can hike it to any one of three guys. And It's a deceptive offense. It's option, obviously, all over the place. And uh, when teams run it successfully, it has been, obviously, you can say that about any offense, but they don't throw a lot out of it. You're lucky if you get three or four throws in a game. That's a lot. So when you do throw, it tends to be more accurate in terms of, you know, scoring or getting a first down or something because it's so rare in the game. Again, Cotter is still warming up. The Cardinals have just now come onto the field here. And we'll see if they add some more time on the clock. Typically, they do that. As Bethlehem Academy has a 30 to nothing lead over the Winona Cotter Ramblers. Cody Kosfeld here at the Power 96 Sports Microphone on KQCL FM, Faribault, Minnesota, a town square media station. Tomorrow night, we'll have the Faribault Falcon home opener against St. Anthony Village. St. Anthony Village will be the opponent tomorrow night for the Faribault. Falcons on this Bruce Smith field in the Cardinal football team BA football team next week goes and makes the long and winding trip to Rushford Peterson High School you're not too far from Wisconsin there Rushford Peterson always good in football so it'll be a stiffer test than this one tonight as the Cardinals are up 30 nothing here at halftime. Kind of like the, the Gophers were up 3 nothing at the half last I saw. 7 3 now. It's now 70 to 3? 7 to 3, we're down. We're behind? Oh, my head. This is a game that the Gophers really have to win because their schedule is I mean, they got Michigan and Ohio State. And, oh, boy. You lose to Nebraska, it's going to be a long season. It's not over yet, but they're behind 7-3, to three, which obviously tells me they're not getting a lot of offense. The defense has held the opponent to one touchdown. You can't ask much more than that. So they did add a few more minutes on the clock because the Cardinals were a little late in getting back out here. Which was kind of interesting because they're up 30 to nothing. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. It hasn't been oh, right you, time. You, All right. you know, Ramblers are out here pretty early. I mean, what do you say, right? We're down 30 to nothing. Let's pretend it's 0 0. I mean, that's about all you can say to your team, right? Pretend it's 0 0 and let's go out and win the second half. Good thing I wasn't a coach, right? <laughs> we get ready for the second half coming your way in just a moment.
Well, come on. Three with return. Yep. Kick return by Dane Guzzo. 66. Here's the kids on attack with Carter. Forty nine to go. We didn't we only missed like eleven seconds, folks. I honestly don't know what happened there. I would be lying if I said I did. And all I know is we're back. <laughs> Eleven forty nine to go here in the third quarter. Thirty to nothing, Bethlehem Academy lead. We had a flag on this play. Cotter got the ball to start the second half, and they're marching a penalty against Bethlehem Academy. Ramblers are going left to right, and the Cardinals right to left on your radio dial. We got a personal foul face mask against the Cardinals. And another penalty against the Cardinals. So they are going to march the penalty out to the 45-yard line, 46-yard line, and that's where Winona Cotter will have it. Well, I'm sure the Cardinals would love to pitch a, a shutout here, right, in your season opener. You would think so. Double receivers left and right. Biden drops back. He throws off to his right. He's got his man. He's going to bring it down. Barner will bring him down at about the 45-yard line. Just a quick out route was thrown that time. As Gabe Stewart made the catch. 45-yard line will be second down at about one. Second and one. Double receivers left and right. And up the middle goes the young man Guzzo, and they did not adjust up the middle because he, he gets a first down and a whole lot more as he takes it down to about the 34-yard line. That might have been why they were in the locker room a little longer, trying to make an adjustment on that. We got an injured Cardinal here, unfortunately. As Coach Beckman goes out to look at his player, Dusty Deans comes over. He's laying pretty still down there. Dusty squeezed his hand. Obviously a lot of concern here. They got him to sit up. He was laying flat so I didn't see the number. He is moving his hands and everything, so that's good. And it looks like he's going to come off under his own power, and that's good to see, too, as it's Lucas Karen. And he's holding his left shoulder, I think, or his shoulder, maybe the... Uh,
collarbone. First and ten Ramblers at the Cardinal 34 yard line. So, 10.47 to go. Connor will continue their drive here. Spiten has a man come in motion. He tosses it to him. That's Gardner. He's going to bounce it out left. Broke one tackle. Nice tackle by Linneman from behind. Oscar Linneman on the tackle from behind. Reverse to Luke Gardner. Tackle by Oliver. As he takes it down to the 34-yard line, it'll be first down. No gain on the play. Second and 10. Or second and 10. 34-yard line. Woody Kosfeld here at the Power 96 Sports Microphone. Trips to the right, single receiver left. He's going to whip it out to the right. They got a receiver screen, and he uh, started running before he really got set up. And brought down. They did get a few yards on the play. Linneman on that tackle. Caught by Luke Gardner. Tackle by Oliver Linneman. And Gardner slow to get up here. And they're going to come out and take a look at him. They're dropping like flies. I said that because there's a lot of flies in the press box here. So that's remedied, I guess. Double receivers left. Couple receivers out right. Most of the night they haven't been throwing it a lot. He's going to whip it this time, though. And he's, well, he's out of bounds. He's well out of bounds. Coverage for the Cardinals. So it's going to be fourth down fourth and, seven. and about seven. As checking back in is the young man who was injured there, Gardner. So it's good to see him back. He's had a couple of nice kick returns in this game. So receiver right, trips to the left. They're making noise here at Bruce Smith Field. Cardinals up 30 to nothing. There's the snap. Spike drops back, looks left, locks left, throws over the middle, and it is almost picked off by Veland. And he goes, man, I should have had the ball. Spiton's pass intended for Patrick Morgan is incomplete. Five, sorry. Five. Five. Yeah. Pass was intended for Luke Gardner. Turnover on That'll be first down for the Cardinals at the 31-yard line. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. We have eight minutes, nine minutes, 24 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Again, running time takes place in the fourth when you're 35 points or more ahead, I think it is. It's 30 to nothing right now. We have quads to the right and Dylan isolated off to the left. He's got Preston Mikey on him. They're going to throw it out to Dylan. He's going to make the catch. And no, he was out of bounds. Out of bounds, they rule, at around the 50-yard line. They've been determined to get that play going. He let him out of bounds on the throw. You know, when I see isolation like that, I'd run a slant, and you got that open all day. All day that would be open. Because, you know, you got four receivers on the other side that they got to cover, and you have that isolation on that side. 
So, again, we got double receivers left. High formation It's going to be a pitch. Sandal's going to hand it off to Lineman. Lineman on the round, in round, is going to take it to the 50. He's going to take it to the 45. He's going to take it side steps. He's at the 40. He's at the 35. He's at the 30. And he's still going as he takes it all the way down to the 20-yard line. And there's no flag on the play. I thought, sure, I show up. I thought, sure, I saw a push in the back by one of the Cardinals, but they didn't call it. <laughs> uh, it looked to me like there was a push in the back, but none of the guys in pinstripes saw it. So it's a first down all the way down to the 22-yard line. So we got Dillon off to the left. We got Lineman off to the right. We got Sando who's going to line up right. We got Potter who's going to land up, line up right. Barner is going to stand to the right of Velen. There's the snap, drop back, look to his left again. There is Dillon, and it is a touchdown. 22 yard touchdown pass. Comes with. Eight minutes and 31 seconds to go in the third quarter. And they'll go for two again. Milan under center, takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Then he pitches it out right, and Barner is going to be stopped short. Boy, getting out there nicely to make the tackle is Isaac Meinke. He's only a sophomore. Did a beautiful, that was a textbook tackle there by Meinke. So 8.31 to go. The two-point run is unsuccessful. They've only missed a couple of those two-point conversions. Other than that, it's been a very successful night. A very successful season opener for the Cardinals of Faribault Bethlehem Academy. Up 36. You heard me right. 36 to nothing. Thirty-six to nothing is their score. So the Cardinals will kick off again. Mr. Sando, see if he gives the duties to somebody else here. No, he's going to kick off. <laughs> I think the official said, hustle out here, young man. Puts the tee down. Lambros are standing at their 10. Official says, go ahead. He's going to kick it away from Gardner. It'll be taken by Guzzo. He goes up the middle. And again, another return. They're going to be working on some special teams here. The next practice they have. They're going to mark this ball down for the Ramblers at the 42. 42 yard line. All right, he's going to whip it out to the left, and he sidesteps the would be tackler and gets the first down. So they got the first down down to the 44 yard line. Seven, 
One good thing about this, Cardinal should be able to play everybody here tonight. All 28 players. As we had a fake on the trap. And they did strip, Sando did a great job. Sando stripped that ball. Sando from behind punched it out. And so the Cardinals will recover on the Sando punch out of the ball as he was from behind. And they're gonna recover it at the 34 yard line. So for the 34, they'll take over first and 10 with the Bethlehem Academy Cardinals up 36 to nothing with 7.38 to go. Under center, Velan, he'll quick pitch it to Sando. Sando's gonna bounce it outside. He's gonna have the first down. And he'll be brought down at about the 47. So a 13-yard pickup out to the 47. And that's another Cardinal first down. And it'll be a Cardinal first down. And my guess is they'll pretty much keep it on the ground here, keep that clock moving. You don't want to get anybody hurt. Looks like a full moon out here tonight. Isn't there a second full moon of August? Something like that? Blue moon? Yeah, one receiver out left. He's going to hand it off and cutting up the middle right and then going back to the left. Sando again. He gets helped up by some of the Ramblers and takes it into Winona Cotter territory at the 47. Getting some help from one of his buddies is Sando. Joseph Kunze was fixing his shoulder pad as they walk back to the huddle. We have a penalty against the Cardinals that'll march it back to the 37 yard line. Probably more penalties than the Cardinals would like. But again, it's a season opener. First and 20. They have to get to the 43, and they're at their own 37. 43 of the other side. Here he goes. He's going to whip it down the field. That shows you what I know. It's incomplete. Linneman might have turned his ankle on that play. He tried to make that catch. He might have looked like he was limping there coming out of that. I'd come to the sideline right away. There you go. Yep. Don't want to tweak it anymore. This game's well in hand. He's trying to stretch it out. 36 nothing is our score. Bethlehem Academy leads. It'll be second down and 20. Well, we got another flag. This one's against one O'Connor, I think. Oh, man. That's all we need to do is have it bogged down here. Five yard penalty, second and 15 for the Cardinals. Cardinals going right to left on your radio dial. Elon's going to drop back a pass again. He rolls to his left. He's going to run. And he runs out of bounds, and he gets pushed well out of bounds, and that's going to be a penalty for sure. He was five yards out of bounds when he got pushed over by the benches. So there's a big-time personal foul there. That was just not uh, the wisest thing to have. <laughs> that was, he was uh, more than five yards out of bounds. Remember, it was 20 yards to go for a first down, so they just gave him a first down right there. Because it's from where the infraction was, and the 
personal foul, 15 yarder, takes it down to about the 40. Man, oh man. Frustration, I'm sure you're down 36 nothing. But still, he was well out of bounds. So Potter's off to the right, so are three other guys. They got Iso with Dylan off to the left again. He's being guarded by Gabe Stewart here. He's going to whip it out there, and he catches it. And he's going to go out of bounds at about the 27. So about a 13-yard pickup on that pass. As they mark it at the 26. So it's off by a yard. Double receivers right and left. We got Barner standing to the right of Velan. He's going to drop back and pass again. He throws off to the left, and it is no good. Yes, Sando was going on a fly route that time, and the fly couldn't catch the ball. Six minutes, 21 seconds to go. Well, <laughs> if you run the ball, the clock still moves. If you throw the ball and it's incomplete, the clock stops. So trips to the right, single receiver left, dropping back as Veal. He's going to throw again. He's going to whip it out to the right, and it's going to be, well, that's pass interference all the way. Young man was never looking back, and he pushed him in the back to boot. So big-time pass interference call. And that does not look good. It looks like he might have dislocated his knee. Oh, it's a cramp. Okay. Whew. I was going to say, the, the way he was, his knee was bowed out, I thought maybe, uh-oh. <laughs> but it's a cramp because uh, Dusty's over there tipping his toe. So... Six minutes and 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. It's 36 to nothing. Thirty-six nothing is our score. We got another injury deal. It was Potter, by the way, who had the cramp. Well, it is a warm night, and he goes both ways, and I don't know that he's come out a whole lot. And remember, it's 36 to nothing. Six minutes and 13 seconds to go. So the first and goal from the five. Bethlehem Academy trying to punch it up over 40 here. Have an eye formation. Velan under center. He'll take the snap. He'll hand off to Barner. Barner goes up the middle, and boy, did he get popped. Just as he got inside the five, a big linebacker crunched him. That was Dykeson. He's, uh, well, they don't have the heights and weights in here, do they? He's a big dude. Let's just put it that way. 5.42 to go, third quarter. So it's second and goal from the two. Sando stands to the right, double receivers right, handoff goes to Barner. I'm sorry, I said Sando was Barner. And Barner scores from... Two yards out. So Barner gets a two-yard touchdown run. Well, Coach Beckman told me a few of his guys are going to 
coming to Jana's Market Grill, our new home for the Coaches Show on Saturday morning. So I hope we're going to have a lot of fun visiting with them. Five minutes and 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. So we're pretty much assured of having running time, unless, of course, well, even if they score, we'll have that in the fourth quarter. As Veland's going to throw a pass, and they got the two-point conversion. They threw it to Dillon. Two-point pass to Dillon. So with five minutes and 16 seconds to go, it is... Forty-four to nothing. With five sixteen to go in the third quarter, I didn't miss a quarter and fall asleep or something. We're in the third, right? <laughs> well, I was having trouble with my computer here. I thought maybe I missed a quarter, but we only missed eleven seconds of the third quarter. As Sandoz going to jog out there and kick it off again. This is the season opener. And the Cardinals have really dominated. A 44 to nothing. Meanwhile, the Gophers have not dominated against Nebraska. From what I hear, there's an end over end kick. It's going to be taken at about the 15. He's at the 20. He's going to bounce out to the 25. He's at the 30. He's at the 40 of the far side. Again, a kickoff return. They give up a lot of yards. They've had a few of those here tonight. Luke Gardner, that Gardner dude can run. Return for the Ramblers. Knocked out of bound by Derek Sando. So we'll see what happens here. As... They went all the way down to the 39-yard line of B.A. That's where they'll start, 39 B.A. Second time they've started in B.A. territory in this game. Double receivers right. Double receivers left. The backup quarterback standing next to the starting quarterback. And it's a high snap. And the backup catches it. And he runs away from a would-be tackler and just gets pushed out of bounds by Dillon. Smart play there. Get that close to the sideline. Just push them out of bounds. Let their momentum take them out. It's going to be a loss on the play of about three. It'll be second and 13. They've got a uh, big guy in center. Brett Bizanz is their center. He's a senior. The right guard is not a particularly huge guy. Ezekiel Jaworski. He's a sophomore. Actually, Bizanz is not the center. The center is Errol Paulson, a freshman. High snap again. Runs back and covers it up. As the high snap went over the head of the quarterback, and he picks it up at the 45-yard line. And they're going the wrong way. They're heading toward Kenyon. Loss of 13 on the play. Timeout, Winona Cotter. So Cotter's going to take a timeout, and they're going to try and, you know, settle down. They've had two snaps over the head of the quarterback here on this series. they got a freshman in there at center. Who knows, the other guy might have been hurt. The uh, That might have been the case, or maybe they're just trying to get more guys playing time. With four minutes and 33 seconds to go in the game, it is in the third quarter. <laughs> it's 44 to nothing. Unbelievable. So 44 to nothing is our score. 
Tomorrow night, we've got Faribault Falcon football. They play the St. Anthony Village team. They might be the Villagers, I don't remember. If they are, they could have the village people do their, th you know, their their mass their school song. <laughs> so from the 45-yard line, left to right in your radio dial, it's third down and forever. They got to go all the way down to the 29-yard line of the Cardinals. Receiver left. They got that ISO play, too. They're going to throw that way as well. They get one-on-one -on -one that way. The ball's popped up in the air. Nice defensive play by Mr. Karen. Or no, that wasn't Mr. Karen. It was a good job knocking it away by Noah Casper, the junior. Casper just plucked that ball away. He looked like a volleyball player on that play. And they'll bring it back. It'll be fourth down and forever. They got to get all the way to Warsaw here. Cotter was getting snaps over the head toward Kenyon, and now they got to get to Warsaw to get a first down. With 4.26 to go in the third quarter. I wish these teams would run more so we could move that clock more. And I think a lot of fans are feeling the same thing. As he runs to his right and kicks it, it's going to be caught. He's at the 25, he's at the 30, he's at the 35, and he'll get brought down close to 40. So a nifty return there by Linneman. It's good to see him back. Remember, he limped off earlier. Looked to me like he might have turned his ankle, but he's a tough guy. Plays hockey. He's a tough guy. Plays football. Ball at the 39-yard line. So first and 10, Bethlehem Academy. And we'll see if they decide to run some clock here. 4.15 to go in the third quarter. He's going to hand it off. Sandal's going to bounce it out to the right. He, sides, he breaks a tackle, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds. Down to the 46-yard line of Cotter. Another Cardinal first down. Woo! As he takes it down to about the 46. About a 15-yard pickup from the 39. So right to left on your radio dial go the Cardinals. And they're not done yet. As Veland comes under center. Linneman left. He's going to hand off to Sando again. He's going to break out of the... Boy, he had a gaping hole initially. And he'll be brought down at about the 38. So about eight yards on that play. It'll be second and two. Let's see where they mark the ball. It should be at the 38. It'll be second and two from the 38. As it looks to me like the... Uh, Remember, they only have 28 guys. So it looks like the starting line's still in there. I'm just trying to see if we have any subs in. In the line. As Velen takes the snap, drops back, looks to throw. He's going to whip it out to the right. The man had separation, and he's going to have it, and he's going to stop, and he's going to score. in for the Cardinals. That looked like a cartoon as two guys ran around him and he went between them and got into the end zone. <laughs> I missed the yardage on that one. There were two guys down there. <laughs> and I don't know why neither one of the Cotter Ramblers went after the ball, but they didn't. And then Linneman caught it between them, and he sidestepped them both and went into the end zone. Handoff goes to Barner. He's got the two-point conversion. Barner in for the two-point conversion. Score now, B.A. Cardinals 52, Winona Cotter 0. Barner run is good. 
That comes with 2.53 to go in the third quarter. We'll have running time in the fourth. 52 to nothing. How would you like to have to ride the bus to Winona tonight? I'd sleep. I'd be sleeping the whole way. <laughs> uh, yeah, then you got to go to school tomorrow and hear from all your classmates. What was that score? And the thing's not over yet. It could end up 70 to nothing. Who knows? Been impressive by the Cardinals, I will say, especially. Well, their defense has been pretty good, too, but they got so many weapons on this team. So they were trying to locate the tee. You would think it would be readily accessible, as many kickoffs as they've had. But uh, they'd finally find it. And so Sando will kick off here. Right to left on your radio dial. The kick is to the near side and it's going to go out of bounds. <laughs> Sando puts his arms up in the air like, I don't know why I kicked it out of bounds. Well, his foot's probably tired by now. If he got hurt, somebody else would have to kick. Maybe you should find out who your backup kicker is. So for the 35-yard line, Cotter will start again. And they certainly could help their cause if they didn't throw it all over the place, but we'll see what they do. And they got that ISO play. Matthews is off to the right. He made a one-hand grab on the snap, and he'll run out of bounds. Barner ushers him out over the 40 to the 44, they say. So it'll be second down and one. We do have some different personnel in there. Casper, not a starter, is in. Velen is still in at the safety. Hand off up the middle. He's going to break a couple of tackles. This is Guzzo, and coming up to make the stop, I think, is Sando. And it is. By Dane Guzzo, by Sando. Sando says, I got to come out of here. So here we go. Lighting again as Guzzo standing to his right. There's a high snap again. And he picks it up. His knee was on the ground. Yeah, he's down. Back at the 45. I don't know how many high snaps that is. There's been quite a few. <laughs> the head coach for Cotter, his look on his face is priceless. I had my camera. I'd take a picture. <laughs> that was awesome. 52 to nothing is our score. I don't think he can believe all the high snaps. There's another one. As he drops back and whips it out to the left, and it's going to be intercepted. 
It's picked off by Velen, and he'll be thrown down out of bounds. Fighting pass is intercepted by Elliot Velen. And Velen helps up the guy who tackled him. And the guy who tackled him is groggy over there. That's not good. Anyway, it's good sportsmanship there by Elliot. So the ball's going to be at the 38-yard line. Or excuse me, the 43-yard line. Been a long day, folks. You can't take any breaks, so makes it even longer. Minute eight to go here in the third quarter. You heard me right. It's the third quarter. As Velen rolls to his left, he throws right-handed quarterback right on the money. He's at the 40. It's Dillon. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. He's going to weave his way all the way to the other side of the field. He's going to be caught at inside the 10, and that probably he puts both hands on his hips like, man, I thought I was going to take it all the way. Man, I didn't make it. <laughs> he took it all the way down to the what is that, the five-yard line? Six, something like that. And that's another Cardinal first down. So they're all the way down. First and goal at the five-yard line. Uh, just the nose of the football is on the five. As they sprint up, they get another snap off. We got a new man deep in the eye, and the handoff goes to the new man, and he gets tackled right now. And the new man is Samuel Fragoso. He's a sophomore. Carried by Sam Fragoso. What a cool name. How come I can't have a cool name like Fragoso? And that's the end of the third quarter. Wow. Did you time that third quarter, Troy? It was 43 minutes, seriously? The third quarter was 43 minutes. You guys believe that? A 43-minute third quarter. And unfortunately, I cannot take a break. I got to keep talking. <laughs> uh, for some reason, we're going to start the fourth quarter. We should have running time here. With a score of 52. You don't want to get any of your starters hurt. And of course, you don't want to get any of your reserves hurt either. I understand that, but. So the season opener is Going to be very successful here for the Cardinals. The only question is, are they going to pitch a shutout, and are they going to score more? They have 52 points. As we start the fourth quarter. Second and goal now at the seven-yard line. Velen is in the gun. Second and goal from the seven, and he's going to off to right. For the and he's got a touchdown. <laughs> so a seven-yarder there for Velen. Five seconds into the fourth quarter, they score. If they go for the two, and they are going to, I think, kick. No, no, maybe they are going. Yep, they're, they're going to kick this one. So Sando's going to kick the extra point or try to here. They don't want to rub it in, right? You don't want to. Uh, I thought for a second they were going to fake it. The, the hold did not get down real quick, so <laughs> Sando ended up missing it. But it was. Interesting. It should be running time. It's the fourth quarter. It's a 52-point lead. 
But the officials have to indicate it, I think. Maybe they don't remember the law, the rule. Find that hard to believe, but... I mean, I think they want to get home and eat supper, too. <laughs> this game started at 7.30, remember. But, yeah, I don't know why we're not in running time. I mean, we should be. Well, we'll see what happens here. 11.16 to go. 58 nothing. So Sandal will tee it up again. He might have to get a special insole in that cleat. Cushion his toe. There's an end over end kick that's going to be taken at about the 15. He's at the 20. Bounces it out, trying to get to the 30, and he'll be tackled. That was a nice tackle. Like they tackled Guzzo. That was a really nice tackle by Fragoso. Good, good looking young player there, Fragoso. So I think we got a new quarterback coming in here. No, I'm wrong. <laughs> he still got the senior in there. Yeah, blood all over his shoulder pad. As he runs off to his left and says, I'm going to run out of bounds. That's a very wise move, young man. And we do have running time because he ran out of bounds and the clock's still moving at 10.03 to go. Balls at the 41-yard line. So the next 10 minutes should go by in a heartbeat. They won't be stopping the clock and, you know, unless there was an injury or something. So trips to the right, single receiver left. Handoff goes to Guzzo, and again, a textbook tackle. For Gozo, I love the way this guy tackles. I had a coach back in the day that said they can't run without their legs. Always tackle the legs, and that's exactly what he does. So it'll be third down and 11 from the 37. Double receivers left, right. Guzzo standing to the left of Spiten, who's going to uncork it down the field, and it is caught. And he's going to take it all the way down to inside the 10. Gardner is brought down by Casper, but not before he goes all the way down to the 10-yard line. From the 37, their own 37. First and goal Ramblers. Wow. That was a perfect pass, too. I mean, he hit him right in stride. And the shutout is in jeopardy. Balls at the eight. It's first and goal from the eight with a full moon looking overhead. That's where Cotter's heading toward that moon. They're looking to get on the board here. Snap is made. A good one that time. Whips it out to the right. The wheel route's no good. Guzzo came out of the backfield, and there were a couple of guys over there, and he just didn't make the catch. 
In on the coverage that time was Hayden Dillon. Hayden is a ninth grader. Well, I will say they got, you know, they're, they got some subs in there, so if they don't have a shutout, we got confusion on both sides of the ball here. Spiten in the gun. High over his head goes the snap. He's got to cover it up again. Man, how many times have they had that? There has to be at least a half a dozen of those tonight. Clock continues to tick at seven minutes to go. I had a piece of pizza before the game, but my stomach is growling. Six minutes and 50 seconds to go. My 17 ounce water didn't last very long either. Put that in the memory bank and buy three of them. So Spiten drops back. He's been way back past the 20. They were in, at the 8. The catch is made, and did Gardner get in? He did. There's a touchdown. Spiten's pass caught by Luke Gardner for the Rambler touchdown. So they score 19 yards to Gardner. It was, you know, starters going against uh, reserves. But a score another. The last 622 to go in the game. There goes the uh, shutout. But again, uh, the only starter I really see in there, and I, I could be off by one, but. So here comes the extra point kick. <laughs> With 6.22 to go, it was a high snap again to the holder this time. He got it down, though. Give him a gold medal, the holder. Get that down. So the point after kick is good. Gardner gets the extra point kick after scoring the touchdown. And with six minutes, oh, they stopped the clock. <laughs> with 6.22 to go. I'm obviously not getting any help here, am I? <laughs> 6.22 to go, it's 58 to seven. So Cotter will kick off here. <laughs> so a young lad is going to kick it for Winona Cotter. By the name of Patrick Morgan. He's a junior. And it's going to be a short kick. It's going to be caught on the fly by Potter. He breaks a tackle. Breaks another tackle. He's at the 50. He'll be brought down about the 48. Of Cotter. I don't know if the kicker really meant to do that or what. But. Cardinals will have the ball with six minutes to go. Cardinals ball, first and ten at the Rambler 48 yard line. <laughs> with 533 and counting. A handoff up the middle, and he'll take it down to the 42 or 3 yard line. Hand That's Fragoso. Our new quarterback is uh, Thomas Kunze. 
Balls at the 42. Gain of six on the play, second and four for the Cardinals. Okunzi will come under center, and I'm not even going to say what I was just about to say. I formation here. About a second and about four. There's a pitch. He Fragoso has a portion of bounce, and then he gets twirled to the ground at about the 42. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. So for the 42-yard line, there was no gain on the play. It'll be third down and about three or four. Are the Gophers done yet? No, that was uh, Tim. That was Derek. Derek Stanford. Derek oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was when Troutman. Balls at the 42 yard line. That was a hot day. under center. You get a handoff up the middle, and there's not much there. He was immediately met by a bunch of blue and white jerseys. Was Fragoso. Carried by Fragoso. So Fragoso. Doesn't that sound like a, a good name for a soda pop or something for Gozo? Huh? What do you think? Troy's going to start serving it in his cheese curd stance for Gozo Pop. It's got some mango in it. 3.29 to go. I don't know that anybody listening right now, to be honest. A quick pitch right, up the middle, off to the right. It's going to take it inside the 35, down to the 34. It's Fragoso again. It's the Fragoso period. And that's a Cardinal first down. Yeah, he got the first down down to the 34-yard line. <laughs> oh, under three minutes to go. They got a Fragoso a touchdown here. Couple of receivers right, couple of receivers left. They spread them out. It's a little bit of a high snap. Kunzi's going to get the throw here. He rolls to his left, the right-handed quarterback. Low, 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 and he's going to go out of bounds. I don't know if that was originally called a bootleg or he decided he didn't see anybody open. I, don't know, I didn't know what was called there. Let's see if I can get my binoculars on his play card. No, they're going to run into play this time. Casper comes in with a play. He'd be the perfect guy to call the ghost play on, right, Casper? He did that to me when I was in junior high. At least that's what my teammates claim. Uh, going off to the left. He came from his receiver spot, got a handoff. He's still mowing. He's at the 20, and he's going to be brought out of bounds at about the 15. Sweep to Fragoso. It's Fragoso again. That's another Cardinal first down. And that guy is in good shape because he's running back to the huddle after all these carries. Minute 26 to go. Fragoso is going to have quite a bit of yardage here. He takes it down the 14-yard line. So, Kunzi will come under center. Probably should get you our center and our other lineman here, too. Center is Braxton Wieg. He's a sophomore. They fake it to Fragoso. <laughs> And Conrad takes it up the middle. Aiden is a freshman. They're going to mark the ball at the seven-yard line. And the question is, are they going to get this off? Oh, yeah, there's 40 seconds to go. They could maybe get a couple plays off. He's in the gun here. Man in motion. He's going to run to his right. Breaks a tackle. Rose more right. And he'll be drug out of bounds. Keeper by Tommy Kunze. 
with 16 seconds and counting. He takes it down to about the four yard line. And this will be the last play of the game if they get it off. They might not get it off. Four seconds, three seconds, and they're not gonna get it off. That's gonna be your final score, ladies and gentlemen. 58 to seven is the final score. 58-7 Cardinals. Let's see, they had one in the second half. We won't go over all the scoring, but in the second half, Velen hit Dillon with 8.31 to go for a touchdown. The two-point run was no good. Barner had a two-yard touchdown run of 5.16. The two-point pass to Dillon was good. A 32-yard touchdown by Linneman with 2.53 to go. The run was good by Barner, and Velen had a touchdown seven yards with 11.55 to go. Again, the final score, 58-7. to seven. Let's get back to more classic rock after I tell you who brought you our broadcast here today. They include First United Bank, Amesbury Truth, Bethlehem Academy, Faribault Transportation, Faribault Air Conditioning and Heating, by Federated Mutual Insurance, Garlic's Water Conditioning, and Malika's Auto Body. I don't 